Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We are here today live. I have a special treat for you all. Today I have with me Miss Kimberly, aka just call her Kim. <laughs> she is a travel nurse and founder of the mobile app Classic Girls. She believes in leading with love and knowledge, encouraging, uplifting, and motivating women all around the world to remain their truest and unapologetic selves. She stands firm in her calling from God and and is making a huge impact and she happens to be one of my dearest friends so i'm just so proud of her and i want you guys to get to know a little bit more about her today so you're gonna hear from her hey kim hey, hey. hi everybody <laughs> so we are so happy to have you here why don't we just go ahead and start just i know i gave you a warm introduction but won't you go ahead and let them know a little bit more about you so as she said, um, I am a travel nurse. I am currently in Los Angeles um, and I'll probably be here for the next three to four years. Um, and as she also said, I am the founder of Classic Girls and we are currently under a rebranding, revamping kind of season. Um, and I'll just share a little snippet of what will be happening. So we're going to be turning classic girls into a unisex brand. So it'll be just classic now. Um, with the climate of everything in the world, um, I think that it's important for us to also include um, the men um, who also need guidance, who need mentors, um, who just need that community of men that can uplift them, encourage them, and show them like, hey, we have similar stories, you can still make it. Um, but a little bit about me, hmm, what should I share? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, since you already got into that, let's go ahead and just start with, um, let us know like what inspired you to embark on this journey? Honestly, um, unfortunately, I would have to say it was due to, um, pain. Um, I ended up being in a relationship um, and we parted ways and it left me in a place where I had to really dig deep, really start um, doing some soul searching. Um, and it was at that time that God kind of gave me the vision um, of classic, classic girls and what to do and how to do it. Um, and it really just kind of helped me to use my pain for purpose mm -hmm. um that be everybody's story but for me it took for that event in my life to happen for me to really even kind of find that creativity within myself um to also be able to pour into other people no absolutely that's actually really important and actually really relatable um believe it or not to a lot of people you know a lot of our purpose do stem from pain but how did you realize that that was like god speaking to you i know like for me it takes solitude like in those moments where you're just completely alone and you're in your word and you're praying crying talking whatever that looks like what was that for you honestly um and even now, I can't say that I have it all together. I'm still piecing everything together. Um, of course. For, but it's funny how I always end up in California when it's time for me to be in a true solitude, which is the times that I find God speaks to me most. Um, and it could be the smallest of things. It could be confirmation from a person. Um, it could be... Your your volume went out. I can't hear you. No, I don't know what just happened. I can hear you now. <laughs> okay, I can hear you now. Okay. I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, so I'll just say that little piece again. Um, but for me, honestly, it's, it's funny how I end up in California when it's time for me to be in like a complete solitude. Um, it's where I find myself most creative and it's where I can honestly take the time to really have that intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, being in Atlanta, 
things can be a little foggy when there's so much going on when you're around everyone. And I think for me, the change of scenery and seeing different things, I think I, I feel as though God speaks to me when I'm away from everything, everybody familiar, every place, every everything that I'm used to. When I step outside of that comfort, God speaks to me most. Um, so for me, that's that's kind of how I knew that it was God. Um, as far as like my process, some days I'm okay, some days I'm not. Like some days I cry, some days I'm completely happy. And I think it's just more so a process and making sure that I'm taking the time out to make sure that I keep God first and in the center of my life. And I think at times I have put God on the back burner, you know, and you kind of see the consequence for that when things start unfolding in your life. So, yeah. <laughs> you said a mouthful there. So let's unpack that a little bit. <laughs> so going back, you know, it's interesting that you said that every time you're in that space where you need to like reconnect or just really get that solitude time, you're in California. And being that, you know, you're from New Orleans, you lived in Atlanta, and it's like the complete opposite side of the world. <laughs> like, how does that feel, you know, being away from your family and your friends and everything? Um, it doesn't, it doesn't feel great always. So I won't say like, oh my God, like I'm in LA and everything is just, you know, all roses. Um, I do have those moments where I'm like, man, I want to go home. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I also see how far I've come. I also see my growth and I also see the difference within my relationship with God. And I think that's what keeps me grounded while yeah. I'm here. Um, and I think at this point, you know, as, as far as relationships, I think my goal at this place in my life is to create and maintain healthy relationships, even prior to, you know, inviting someone into my space as far as dating. Mm -hmm. I think you know, it's important for me to make sure that I'm maintaining those friendships, even um, relationships with family. All of those relationships that are platonic still kind of shapes you for preparing for that whole partner and dating and all of that stuff. And I think it's important for you to be whole within yourself first. Mm -hmm. And that's where I am in this season. So yes. that is good. That is so good. Um, <laughs> so tell us like, what does that look like? Because on the faith podcast they always hear me talk about like my time with god or this and this and like when people hear that if they're not there yet and they want to be they're like well what does that look like like how do i do that like so can you tell us like what does your i guess morning routine or afternoon routine or however you fit it in because you are a nurse and i'm sure your hours like vary all the time so like how do you what does that space look like for you so for me I think it took a while to actually make time for God. Like, I think we think that it's just something that we do leisurely, but you have to actually create a time and a space for you to be in that solitude. And for me, it's in the morning. Um, I like to start my day off with it, and I also like to end my day with it. So in the mornings, um, I have the Bible app on my phone. I choose different um, devotionals that speak to where I am in that season. Um, and then I've also been choosing like a book of the Bible and I'll read like three to five chapters and kind of dissect that um, and do my, you know, my meditation praying and kind of just allow God to speak to me in those times as well. And then at night I like to also read three to five chapters if I can after work or what may have you to kind of, you know, wake up with God and go to bed with him as well. Um, I, it makes your day a whole lot better. You start off grounded and it also gives you like a sense of depth, you know, like don't wake up and get on social media right away. Yes. Instagram, like get you together, center yourself in the morning, start your day off. You know, I also journal. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And I think that's important too. You don't always have to vent to somebody like you can journal it out. Mm-hmm. Give it to God. Like, that's what he's there for. Exactly. So that's how it looks like for me. That's good. That's really good stuff. Um, because, you know, for me and like for other people, when different things happen in your life and life happens, um, now that I have a child, like my time with God looks completely different. And you said something so intricate, like you have to carve out that time. Like it's not just going to happen out of the blue. Like you have to be very intentional about it. And I used to be like a early bird morning person, but it's like now I have a one year old and sometimes sis just needs to sleep. So for me, I just like to do late nights. Um, Like, of course, in the morning when I first wake up, I do my prayer and everything, but I don't feel like I'm able to really really, like dive into my journaling and devotionals because I also have to like, my son is up, he want to play, we got to do this and this. But even just incorporating it with him, like I'll read it to him sometimes and, you know, we'll talk. So it's just so important. I want people to understand that no matter what your situation looks like, you have to figure out how you can be intentional about making that time with God. Rather, it's morning, afternoon, nighttime. Just exactly. make it happen. <laughs> I, that, honestly, and you honestly see a big difference when you do make time. Um, I found that, you know, it helps with even like those negative do- thoughts, your doubts, your fears. It's helped me so much with that by pouring the word into myself on a daily. Mm-hmm. It's to combat those negative thoughts or ways that I can get in, in my own way. Yes. You know? <laughs> um, and I also have like sticky notes on my mirror. Mm-hmm. I always um, revert back to that because it really helps me. Like yes. sticky notes on my mirror, I can recite it. I hear it. I see it. It feels tangible. Affirmations. Yes. Think, you know, affirmations are like a big thing for me. Um, But yeah, making sure you carve out the time, I think has really showed me a significant difference in just even life in general, you know? Absolutely. Um, So (laughs) tell us, like, what do you um, feel like is the most important thing that you've done um, as an individual? to contribute to your success or to, you know, the community or the world? Um, The most important thing that I've done thus far, I feel, is honestly being able to give back. Mentoring is like something that has always been easy for me. And even though I make mistakes, I don't have like a perfect life. (laughs) None of us do. I feel like I'm enough of an example to where I can share where I've messed up and also pour into other people for them to be their best selves as well. And I think that's honestly like my superpower, like being able to help other people see themselves. So I think that's probably one of the best things that's helped me contribute to my success just for the simple fact that it's okay to not be perfect, you know, Mm -hmm. like showing people who you are, your authentic self, your originality and letting them know like, Hey, I'm a real person. I'm not perfect. I mess up. (laughs) I make mistakes. Stuff goes wrong in my life as well. But being able to be resilient Mm -hmm. and come back from it, what matters, you know? So I think that's honestly what has contributed to my success. Like sowing seeds and other people that are positive, that are uplifting and encouraging to help them, to also be successful in their own lives. And I feel like it comes back tenfold. Yes, that's really good. So (laughs) tell us, like, what advice would you give to your younger self, like, before you were in this season of, like, (laughs) your identity and following your purpose? Um, If I could give my younger self advice, I would definitely have to say, like, take it one day at a time. It's okay to have big dreams. It's okay to set those big goals, but also know that all of this takes time. It's not an overnight journey. And um, I would have to say, take pride in your process and where you're going more than the destination that you're trying to get to. Mm. Most times we miss what we're supposed to be learning from something or what's supposed to be shaping us that because we're so worried about the destination as opposed to what we're becoming in the process. 
Mm -hmm. So that's honestly what I would tell my younger self. Like, just take it one step at a time. (laughs) And know that it's okay. (laughs) And know that it's okay to mess up, get back every time, and keep being resilient. (laughs) That's, That's so good. I'm so excited for everything that's about to happen in the near future for <laughs> you and just the process that you're going through. Like, I know it's hard, like, and we're so hard on ourselves, especially like we're like, oh, I'm not doing enough or, oh, I'm yes. supposed to be here or oh, I'm supposed to be there. But it's like when your peers can see like from the outside looking in, like, I feel like it just, it's just amazing to see that we're all trying to make a positive impact and we're all doing it with God's plan and not our plan because a lot of times that's where we messed up in the past. Like we're trying to just get it and do it and get it done. And it's like, no, that's not how it works. It's like pump your brakes. (laughs) If that's not a lesson that I've learned just in trying to rebrand for everything to become classic, I'm like, no, I got, like, I got to get it out there. Like I got to start dropping something. I have to launch this or, and it's like, God's like, no, take your time. Like, this isn't something that's supposed to be overnight. This is something that's going to have longevity. So you can't try to throw something together and think you're going to be able to stand on that. And it's okay to not have something to put out. Like, you're doing enough, Mm -hmm. okay? Like, and even with the whole pandemic, like, I had to really even kind of shy away from social media because I did feel like I wasn't doing enough, like, you know, I had a grandparent that was sick. I had a, my dad that was sick. And it was like, I couldn't even focus. Like, I just, and it's like, okay, stop comparing where you are to somebody else or what somebody else is doing because that's literally the thief of all of your joy right now. Mm-hmm. Like, you, I'm the rest. Like, use this time to create. And when it's time for you to launch, it'll be time, you know? Yes, um, absolutely. No, that, so I, that's that's so real because social media <laughs> with the internet at our fingertips, like it's so easy to fall into that trap. And um, I too, you know, had to shy away like June. I was gone the whole month from social media just because mm-hmm. it does become overwhelming and you're just intaking so many things and everybody's yeah. doing this and everybody's doing this. And it's like, wait, <laughs> like I'm trying to catch up and keep up and It takes your focus off of your purpose and what God has set out for you to do. So I always tell people, take the time that you need. It's okay. It'll be there when you return. (laughs) Like it's not going anywhere. (laughs) And that's true. And I was like, you know, with this next launch, I want it to be like completely something that both, both like women and men can relate to. And also just showing people that there are still genuine people who really want to see you win um, and not just trying to come up off of you or providing a service where they can come up off of you. And I think that that's super important right now because it's like, where are all the genuine people? Like, where are the people who send you a thank you card? You know, like people who really care about... (laughs) somebody like not just themselves it's like everybody's all for themselves nowadays and i'm just ready to put out some genuine originality with classic like i'm excited to see everything grow and to finally be able to be consistent with what i'm bringing to the table um because that's been a biggie too like just being inconsistent with how it should be brought to the light or into the world so now i'm just trying to figure everything out and taking my time but i think that's also part of the process you know with anything it's going to go through a rebranding or different seasons and things like that so if there was a manual (laughs) we would all have it together so (laughs) i think that is completely okay as long as every time that you're doing something you know that it's coming from the right place and not just Oh, mm-hmm. here's this, this $20 product, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, versus right. you know that you put it out with the intent that God spoke to me, so I acted on it. And it's okay if he told me to pull back and rebrand, because believe it or not, I just feel like, and in the Bible it says it, and Jeremiah says, God knew 
what he wanted for us before we were formed in our mother's womb. So even growing up as far as back into our childhood, like we were already doing things to lead to our purpose. And for me, like I have always been for the community, giving back and bringing people (laughs) together. Like I've always done that. And like, when I literally reflect, I'm like, when I felt like I was, you know, trying to figure out a point in time in my life. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to be doing? Like, what am I good at? And then looking back, it's like, I've really always been doing this my whole life, but now is really time to like bring it all together and put it into the form that God's God wants me to present it. So I think that that's completely okay. As long as, you know, you're always doing it with the right intent, because a lot of times people do let the oversaturated market and the, the internet and the world steer them in the direction to just get quick money and nothing is quick about longevity or financial um family legacies generational wealth none of that is about quick money so that is funny um if you if you chase your purpose the money will follow you like you don't have to worry about oh, you know, I won't be able to make money if I do it this way or that way. Like the opportunities will flow as long as you're within your purpose and what God has destined for you. And I think for me, that's what kind of kept me grounded. Mm -hmm. Like no matter what I do, she always say, Kimberly, chase your purpose. Don't worry about where the money's going to come from or how it's going to come. That part will be added to you. And the Bible also says that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think by God first and staying within your purpose, everything else will be added onto you without you even having to force it, without you trying to make it happen. Everything will flow just as it is supposed to. Yeah. So absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Kim. We have enjoyed you today. Can you go ahead and let everyone know where they can keep up with you um, when it is time for the huge launch? Of course. So um, as of right now, um, you can follow me on Instagram at Kimberly Chardé underscore. Um, and that's K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y-C-H-A-R-D-A-Y underscore. Um, and then you can also follow the Classic Girls page, which is Classic Girls Co. at Instagram. Um, I don't really have a Facebook like that. They um, can download the app. <laughs> So with that, (laughs) no, (laughs) so I'm going to be, I'm in the process of actually building a separate app. So I'm going to do away with classic girls since it'll be unisex. um, I'm going to do just one app for everything. Um, Oh, okay. So I didn't know how that worked. Like if you can edit it like a website or whatever. So you have to completely like start over with that process. So I was with the company. so they were pretty much doing like all of my maintenance for me. I did the design myself, but um, I was also paying a fee like monthly. So now what I'm doing um, to be able to have control over everything that's um, connected to my brand, I'm building it from scratch now. Gotcha. So that's where we are. So we will have another app, just not right now. <laughs> <laughs> We listen, we here for the long call. We're here with you, sis. So whatever you have coming, we will stay connected. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I will have a website though for everybody to kind of um be able to connect with then. Um I can't even give you a lunch date yet. I'm still working on everything, but you can definitely follow those social media handles to stay updated. Um and yeah. Awesome, sis. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in today and we will see y'all next time.